All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I am joined by Daniel Hebrew Busher. How are you, mate? Muzzle tough. Today, we are going to be doing our All Australian sides for the first half of the year up until the completion of round 11 because we're filming this in the middle of round 12. So yep. not taking into account after that. We're just kind of trying to acknowledge the players that have been the best for their positions up to this point of the season. Before we get into it, this video is brought to you by our very special sponsors, Manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping off their elite ball grooming products, where can you go, Busher? Manscaped.com and punch in the code TRUEFOOTY20. All caps, all one word, link in the description. Let's get into the video. All right, so traditionally we will start from the back line, Bush. So I figured I'll go through my back six yep. and then you'll go through your back six and uh, maybe some reasons on why we've picked that back six. So taking you through mine, I've gone with the key position pairing. This is probably the hardest mm. decision on this entire team was to find just two key backs mm. uh, because I wanted to pick about four of them, to be honest. And I've gone with Harris Andrews from Brisbane. He's been yep. in great form lately. And I've gone with Jacob Wiedering. Mm. And I felt bad about that. I really want to include Stephen May. But I did in mind at the expense of wagering. So yeah. we've, but they've both gotten coverage. I did a bit of research. I was looking through different All-Australian teams that were picked and they were pretty much a mixed bag between Andrews. Um, I think Aaliyah had kind of fallen away mm. a little bit. It's just yeah. uh, not quite... A few weeks ago, he would have been right in the conversation. And that's it. That there's the recency bias. You're sort of picking the guys who were, or at least you remember the yeah. guys who are informed now. But uh, anyway, so I've gone with Andrews and Weedering, and my third key back is uh, Jake Lever. Yep, he's sort of like that interceptor. He's actually yeah, he's my third tall as well. Yep, number one key, sorry, number one intercept player in the league, and I believe he broke the record for most intercepts. Yep, in the he's first got the record. Rounds. Yep. Exactly right. Intercept marks and intercept possessions. No, there you go. Yep. Tom Stewart is my other back pocket. And then, uh, for obvious reasons, kind of picks himself 500 metres game per game, uh, 25 possessions and seven intercepts. So he's pretty elite mm. in that respect. Daniel Rich makes my team on the back flank. I've got him as well, actually. Nice one. Yeah. Um, so he's elite for total possessions, metres gained, rebound 50s, um, and he's a pretty strong intercept player as well. Yep. And I've gone with Christian Salem. Yeah, uh, I'm a really big fan of his work. 25 possessions a game, nearly seven interceptions. Uh, there's a really good demons dynamic in this team, and if, obviously if yeah. I'd picked May, there would have been three. So take us through your back six. Well, I'd, Salem's a good call, but because I'd pack, picked May and Lever, it felt a bit difficult for me to pick him as well. I've pretty much agreed with your four of it I've mentioned that I agreed with but the two different I have is Bailey Dale from the Bulldogs he's had a great year for them out mm -hmm. the back line role change he's really excelled look good there yep and even though his team's bottom of the ladder a move back Jack Zeebel has looked great and as a backman yeah he's been a big fantasy yep. pig actually yep. he's been a big bit. fantasy wise he's yeah getting possession like holding it down in their back half in a struggling team but needs someone to be able to hold it down in their back half and he's doing that as admirably as he can yep. considering their 18th yeah, I agree with that. Basically, my back six is Lever, May, Dale, Zebel, Andrews, Ridge. We'll move yep. into the midfield. So I'll take you through my six. So uh, with a centre line, I've gone Hugh McCluggage. He's third in the coaches' votes, which is an yep. award that I think uh, holds a lot of weight, having a career best season after a breakout season last year as well. Uh, in my centre position, I'm rewarding and acknowledging Ollie Wines mm. for a career best season as well. Uh, he has 31 possessions a game and 14 of those contested. So he's been an absolute bull and uh, under, uh, maybe not underrated, but maybe a little bit understated sort of like barometer player for the for the power this year. He's been fantastic. Um, on the other wing, McRae leads the league in, in possessions. I don't really need to make a strong case for McRae. Yep. I think everyone Makes agrees for himself. that team. And then my followers list, I think this team sort of really speaks for itself yep. or this line. Maxi Gorn mm. is the only Ruckman I've picked. And uh, I think he's been the clear best ruck this year. Okay. My on ballers are Clayton Oliver, leader mm -hmm. of the coaches votes, and Bonton Pelly, who in my opinion has been the number one player this yep. year. So take us through your middle six. Well, my middle six, I've also gone McCluggage on the wing. Funnily enough, he's playing more inside this year, but yet this will be the year he's named on the wing compared to last <laughs> year when he was the best actual wing in the league. Yeah. That's a funny little aside. As my centre man, I've got Bond. He's, as you sort of said, he's probably been the best player in the league this year. On my other wing, I've got an interesting one in Darcy Parrish. He's had, I oh, think, okay. he's had an outstanding year. Like, there's, there's good a toss up between him and Merritt, but Parrish has been more damaging than Merritt. I think yep. he's had some really big games, like the Anzac game. That sort of, oh, but he grazes me nose on the mic there. But my followers, I've got Gorney as the Rock, which is pretty self-explanatory, as you said, best Rockman in the league this year. Even though Grundy hasn't been bad this year either. I've got Petraka and Jared Lyons is my other man, holding yeah, it down very nice. nicely in the absence of Lockie Neal. The midfields were hard to pick, I think. I mean, yeah. uh, for me, okay, so like the, the six that I've picked, I think are clear. 
But yeah. the bench options, that was, I found that hard. We'll get into I that went midfield bit. heavy with my bench, I will say. Did you? Okay, yeah, yeah we'll, get, we'll get to that. We'll go through the forward six. On my half forward line, I've got Christian Petrarca, hmm. picks himself. I think he's probably the number two player on form this year, just yep. behind the bump. That's the way I see it anyway. Taylor Walker and Harry Mackay are my two yep. key position forwards. Same. Number one and two in the Coleman, uh, but I also think that that's justifiably the number one and two uh, key forwards. I've gone for an interesting third tour. I've gone Ben King. I had a third toll as well, but I went Jack Rewalt. Jack Rewalt. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I'm going to go with King. He's fourth in the Coleman, mm. and the play in between is Josh Bruce. And I, I compared the fact that Ben King is more of a focal point for a harder team to be a key forward for. Yeah. Um, I think Ben King earns it for me. So he's my third toll. Um, and then my other two smalls, Toby Green, probably yep. the, one of the best, like, pure forward mids yep I got him on the half forward flank as well yep fantastic. he's had a fantastic year like 19 possessions a game um, and like two two and a half goals a game yeah, as well so 2.2 or something yeah so like he may miss the final all Australian team because he's missing a lot with injury we'll see what happens there but yep. on the form so far he definitely makes it and tipping Woody is my sm- genuine small yep um, same he is equal with Bailey Fritch for goals, and I found it hard to split them. I've got both them both. The, yeah, I was going to say, I've got Fritch on my bench, but we'll get to that. Mm. Uh, and he also ranks elite for goal accuracy as well. And again, I don't really need to sell what value Tipping Whitty brings to the club, uh, to, to a team, rather. Um, so, yeah, I think you can yeah. guess why he's picked, and he's probably been the best pure small in the game so far. I'd agree. Uh, what other I'll just list mine. It's pretty similar to yours. I had on the half forward flank, Fritch, because I had Petraka in the midfield, so I had room for Fritch on that half forward flank. Tex is the half forward because he's been involved in score involvements as well as kicking goals. So yep. he's that guy that gets up the field and can do the link play as well. Toby Green, for obvious reasons, stuff you mentioned. Tipper, outstanding crumb, does what you need out of a small forward. Harry Mackay, leading the Coleman, pretty self explanatory. And then Jack Rewalt, sort of just the way he's led the Richmond forward line with guys like Tom Lynch going out, sort of people coming in and out of the team. He's been the one constant for that Richmond forward line. Mm. All right, so the interchanges. We probably made different philosophy. This is where we can be a little bit more creative. So I've gone with two genuine midfielders, a forward and a back, and I haven't picked any key positions and no second ruck for my mm. team. Darcy Parrish, who made your team as a starting midfielder, I've yep. got on the bench for 30.3 disposals, eight clearances, 450 metres gained, um, and for me, he just edges Sam Walsh, who's a player I yep. wanted to include, but it's just... Sorry, it's just too competitive. I've also gone with Took Miller, who's third in the coaches' votes, um, averaging 30 disposals a game, having, I guess, a breakout year. He's been sort of a linear improver, but this is obviously the first time he's probably been considered elite, and he just cracks my team as well. My uh, forward is Bailey Fritch. Again, it was hard to split him and Tipper, so he was the obvious next forward. And then I've also gone to play that you went on your field, Bailey Dale, as my resting defender. And as for my bench, it's some guys you had starting, like I've got Clayton Oliver and McRae on my bench. I've also slipped my boy David Mundy in there. Yeah, see, he was another player that I really, yeah. really wanted to include. I just couldn't. It was my bias and some other guys had slipped under my radar. Yeah. But probably would deserve it over him, but I put Mundy in there. I think he's just slipped away. He was like one of the best players. His last few weeks have been crap. Like, yeah. Even I have him in my draft fantasy league and I dropped him from my starting lineup after his past few weeks. And then finally I have put Grundy in as a second ruck. Because he enough. has had a good year. He, yeah, I think he's resurged lately. Yeah. I don't think he started well. Slow start. So I understand mm. why you pick him. My, my other second ruck possibility is my extreme bias with Nat Nui. Mm. I think he's probably in the mix for being a second ruck, but not clearly good yeah. enough to make the team for me. Um, any other players that you think are unlucky? So I've mentioned I had Stephen May and Aaliyah that I really want to include. Yeah, Aaliyah's unlucky, I think. Yeah. To not make either of ours. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it probably doesn't quite like represent how good he's been. Um, yeah. Sam Walsh and David yeah. Mundy are the two. Um, David, uh, sorry, <laughs> Travis Boak is a player. Yeah, Boak, he deserves some love. Tom Liberatore as well will probably yeah. make some All-Australian teams on, because he's yeah. just been the number one clearance player this year. And Cam yeah. Guthrie's yeah. also enjoying a great year. And then uh, up forward... Dusty, maybe. I know he's. Yeah. I don't, probably doesn't deserve it. I do think he'll probably end mm. up in the team, though. Yeah. If Richmond come good, I think he'll end up there. And Josh Bruce was a player yeah. who's third in the Coleman and probably would be a bit stiff to look at this and be like, hey, why am I not in it? But yeah. I went for Ben King for the reasons I described earlier. Which is reasonable. I guess before we go, we should probably pick the All Australian coach. For me, there's an obvious answer. Probably Goodwin. Yeah, I think Goodwin's yeah. the clear choice. 10 and 1, yeah. taking the team from outside the finals to top spot and comfortably the team to beat, in my opinion. So he yeah. gets it. What about a captain for this team, Bush? Do you have one? Bontempelli. Yeah, right. I agree. Yeah, same thing. So, yeah, I think there's some pretty clear yeah. answers. For me, he's the best player on the field. Yep, and uh, he's also shown that leadership as a captain of 
the second best team in the league. Yeah, generally you go for the players that are captains to captain yeah. the All-Australian team, although it has happened with Hall where they just pick a Alex yeah. Rance out of nowhere. <laughs> or didn't they give it to Buddy as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, guys, let us know in the comments what you thought of our All-Australian teams. Who did we miss that was really obvious? Who were we yeah. too generous to? If you can be bothered, chuck us your All-Australian team. We'd be interested to see different perspectives from different fans around the league. It'd be great to hear from you. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you in the next video.